They are really four mini dramas under the umbrella of a whodunit. We're sick. Sanjeev is here. Now, Sanjeev, as you know, big fans. Big fans Thank of the much. show. Big fans of Unforgotten. Thank you. Episode one, season five. We, we have uh, straight, straight off the bat, we have uh, on location in Bath. Paris, yes, Thames Estuary, yeah, it's all over the place. The big three, yeah. Can you? <laughs> and so much goes on, and there's so much intrigue, and so you know, so much mystery, as there has to be, I suppose. But these things can be a bit thin sometimes, and this one definitely isn't, is it? No, it isn't. And this is down to kind of Chris Lang's writing, and I've, I've, I think with every series, this is series five. Yeah, uh, they are really four mini dramas under the umbrella of a whodunit. So each one of those individual stories, I think, could be a, an entire series on its own. So I think that. You know, having those four little sort of dramas that are happening, um, I think gives it a kind of depth and a richness and, and stuff that, uh, you know, maybe other shows don't have. But, you know, what we don't have are, are car chases and gunfights and stuff like that. I think all the tension comes from the emotions of, and the interactions and the fact that, you know, they're all lying. Yeah. And so, but Sonny still has his backpack. He still has what his backpack. What is it about, the, t- tell people who don't know, the phenomenon of, of D.I. Sonny's backpack? Well, on series one, you know, when you go in, um, you choose a costume and you, you know, you choose the the accompaniments that go with it, the accoutrements, and uh, they said, you've got to choose a bag. And I thought, well, they gave me these briefcases and stuff. And I thought, well, you know, it's a backpack. It's, it's practical. Yeah. He's got kids. I mean, he'll be using it on the weekends. And um, over the first series, it got, way more attention than it deserved. I mean, people were just saying... <laughs> why why the, did that happen, do you think? Why the, I don't know. They were, I mean, the, the, but the, none of it was particularly positive. <laughs> they just said, why has he got a backpack? He looks like a child. He's not even wearing it properly. <laughs> he wears it on one shoulder. And so by the second series, I said to the costume department, well, it's got to look like it's got something in it. So um, just fill it with stuff and surprise me. I won't look at it during the day and I'll open it at the end of the day and I'll, I'll take a picture of what's in there. And they, they just went crazy. And uh, I started to post these pictures on social media. And it got this weird kind of following in its own right. So I've done that this time. There's a, a platform called We Are Eight, which is this wonderful platform oh, that I'm yeah. kind of uh, involved in. So I'm, I'm posting them weekly on there, the contents of Sonny's backpack. Do you have a backpack? I have got a backpack. I've got a backpack. Have you got a backpack? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Where's yours? Can it's I see it, yours? Okay, oh, that's very good. You see, it's practical, isn't it? Very practical. You- Di sending his back. He's got. A, he's got a new boss for now. He has. How got a long new is boss. she going to stay? Why is she there? What's her story? Well, uh, the previous boss and his friend and and colleague and uh, possibly love of his life, uh, Cassie Stewart, uh, sadly met her end at the end of series four. And uh, so this series is kind of really sunny, kind of in grief. Really, he's kind of hasn't recovered. He hasn't got over it. And, uh, and someone else comes in to effectively take up her uh, post and he doesn't like her. Well, she's a toughie, isn't she? She's tough, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's great casting. Sinead Keenan. Sinead Keenan is brilliant. And I think that what would have been, the worst thing they could have done would have, would have been to bring someone in with the same energy and, you know, the same style. And the fact that they brought in, you know, a completely different character who's got a different energy that clashes with Sonny, I think has been, has been good. The thing I really like about um, uh, all of the series and Chris Lang's writing is that it's emotionally honest. And so I think that it was it was a really interesting place to go that, you know, we as a cast and, and we as characters and also the audience, you know, really felt for Cassie Stewart's demise. And Chris basically has taken my character through what a lot of the audience might be feeling, which is a bit lost and a bit angry and a bit annoyed. It's a fine line, isn't it? Because, you know, the more normal it is, the more believable it is, but then you can't be too normal because it's not dramatic enough to engage the audience. That's right. That's the clever bit. It is, and I think that's why I think if you're emotionally honest, because I think even if you watch a kind of, you know, rollicking action film, if you believe the emotions, you'll go with everything else. You'll say, fine, you know, the person can jump out of a plane without a parachute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still, you know... Uh, land safely and stuff. I think the empathy and and emotional honesty is at the forefront of these particular stories. There are certain characters in the first episode of season five and we don't know what they're there for yet, Mm. Um, but he spends the whole episode establishing them and still not paying that off because, again, he's super confident and it's all in the mix, you know, and he's just, he's just, he has the confidence that we're going to go to the next episode and and crack on. I mean, that is, that's pretty special, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it's it's kind of hallmark of the show and I think that, you know, 
all those people uh, are connected and all those kind of, you know, strings will be slowly pulled together and there'll be a point at which, you know, we as the audience kind of go, oh, he's that yeah, to her yeah, yeah. and she's I'm already guessing, him. by the way. Are you? Yeah, of course. This, yeah. I mean, the unique thing about this particular series over the others, actually, is the, is the the age range of the suspects. Usually it's kind of with a cold case. They're people around the same age because it happened that time, uh, you know, a period of time ago and everyone was around the same age then. But this time, young to old, could be any one of them or more than one. Yeah. Um, you're very good at all this stuff. Is that because of your background in marketing? <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, I mean. <laughs> did you get a degree in marketing? I did. I did business and marketing. Tell That's me about that. Tell me about your mindset and wh why not. By the way, of course, just tell me about <laughs> Sanjeev back then. Well, because my parents, uh, like a lot of um, you know immigrant parents, wanted me to uh, be a doctor, and I wanted to be an actor. So this is this is absolutely true. When I was about five. Uh, some kind of uncle came round to the house and said, uh, so young man, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, actor. And my dad said, it's pronounced doctor. <laughs> and that was... That is good. That, I mean, That's the best story. My dad, my dad then denied it. My mum was there and she's kind of backed me up on that. Um, so I kind of figured that <laughs> the, such a good story. the exact midpoint between acting and medicine was marketing. I was going to say, is that <laughs> the exactly, acceptable bridge? Exactly, yeah, it's the meridian. It's exactly the middle. What else would you like to get out there about Unforgotten Series 5? What do you want to say to people? I think that, you know, there were a lot of people who said they wouldn't watch it after um, Cassie, the Cassie character died, which I kind of get, but I think this series it's a hot take. is they kind were, of about that. They were just saying that, you know. <laughs> They're probably pretending not to watch it because they sort of have to. <laughs> They've kind of trapped themselves in a corner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I hope people enjoy it and I hope we get a chance to do more. And, and Sinead, who had the toughest job of anyone, because not only was Sinead, like her character, coming into a group of people who kind of all knew each other and, and got on, which is kind of quite a nerve wracking thing as being the new kid in school. Uh, and she is and was fabulous.